Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about carcinoma cervix in pregnancy. So the incidence of CA cervix is thought about 1 to 12 per 10,000 pregnancy. All of the pregnancy 1 to 5 percent have abnormal cervical smear finding if you go for pap smear of all the pregnant women. There are uh, increased abnormalities during pregnancy on the smear. It's because of in the pregnancy being a hyperestrogenic state, there will, there will be the eversion of squamocolumnar junction. Sorry, here will be C. Squamocolumnar junction. So, those exposed columnar cell to the, uh, to the vaginal uh, acid will change their self to squamous. So, there will be squamous metaplasia. There is also decidualization of the cervical mucosa along with the uterine, along with the endometrium. Cervical infiltration by the leukocyte is there. Relative immunosuppression is there in the pregnancy. So, HPV activity is increasing. Cervical screening. When you do a cervical screening program for the pregnant, pregnant ladies, you will find that there is an increased false positive rate. So, whenever you send this kind of pap smear to, to be examined by the cytologist, uh, make him or her know that, that this uh, sample is from a pregnant lady. So, they will try to avoid as much as false positive rate. Now, what happens if an abnormal smear you find? Okay. The next thing is always the colposcopy. Colposcopy is actually a very highly sensitive due to cervical changes of the pregnancy. What are the cervical changes? Here. Due to estrogen and increased progesterone, eversion of the cervical uh, squamous columnar junction is there, squamous metaplasia is there, vascularity of the cervix is higher, larger cervix becomes a larger size and that's why it's highly sensitive to the visuals that is colposcopy. So once on the colposcopy and the in, in the pap smear you identify the types of the lesions. If it is L seal, that is a low grade lesion, what you do? You confirm it by colposcopy and repeat this colposcopy and pap smear at every trimester, each trimester of the third trimester. Okay. If the lesion is of high uh, 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 high grade, so what you do? you go for colposcope, you do a punch biopsy or conization. Punch biopsy is always good than conization because conization is associated with more over abnormalities or problems like bleeding and uh, preterm deliveries and like that. So, punch biopsy is, is more suitable. And after punch biopsy, uh, you will do for do a histopathological examination and, that, and then you will able to identify whether the problem, whether the uh, cervical abnormality is microinvasive or invasive. If it is microinvasive, suppose it is non-invasive, then you should defer any treatment to the to after the um, pregnancy is, is done. That means postnatal. If it is microinvasive or if it is invasive, then you have to go for any treatment even during the pregnancy. So the best thing is conization or leap. It should be done. Postpartum evaluation should be done, it's very important, just screen the uh, cervix more frequently. Now what uh, on the punch biopsy what you find uh, there is a invasive disease or there is a CA cervix, what is what that means, what will you do? If, if this, there is a cervix and it is of low grade like 1 stage 1A1, then obviously we know that the conization is the treatment of choice. But after conization, you will find in the histopathological examination the margins of the tissue you got. So if the margins are clear and free from the disease, the pregnancy will continue and vaginal delivery is considered. But if margins are not clear, then uh, postpartum evaluation should be done and simple hysterectomy should be done followed by, uh, sorry, if the pregnancy is uh, done and if baby is delivered, then you can go for Simple hysterectomy. Okay, now the stages like 1B1 or 2, 2A, 1B1 or 2A, you need to go for radical hysterectomy. So this is these are the higher stages and in these stages you need to go for radical hysterectomy and lymph node sampling. With this low grade uh, CS cervix that is 1A1, the lymph node metastasis is rare. That's why we want, uh, we were not doing lymph node uh, sampling and we were doing simple hysterectomy but here 
in this stage 1b1 and 2a radical hysterectomy should be done along with lymph node sampling that is the treatment of choice now the question is where will you give this treatment if the pregnancy is less than 20 weeks yes you can go for hysterectomy and block along with the fetus but if it is not completed if the 20 weeks are not completed then more and more uh, conscious is going on that you should continue the pregnancy delivery at earliest possible at 30 to 34 weeks after fetal steroids you consult with the oncologist and uh, followed by the cesarean section okay and then after after cesarean section, not along with the cesarean section, we will go for radical hysterectomy. Chemotherapy or radiotherapy both are contraindicated in the pregnancy, but still in many uh, many books, you no, know, uh, some of the chemotherapy agents like venecystin, uh, vinblastin, bleomycin have a very little effect on the fetus when they are given in the second or third trimester, as we have discussed in previous video. So what you do? You try to avoid those. Uh, those uh, you try to avoid this radiotherapy and all other agents because we have a clear cut idea of that they are phytotoxic anyway and if the if the cancer is very advanced and maternal prognosis is poor then this becomes a very sensitive issue then many people sometimes uh, try to continue the pregnancy and uh, do a palliative treatments and decrease the harm to fetus so this is again becomes a very sensitive issue so what we are going to talk about that if the stage uh, cancer stage is earlier 1a1 you do colonization you don't terminate the pregnancy if the stage is 1b1 or 2a you terminate the pregnancy if it is less than 20 weeks if it is more than 20 weeks you should uh, uh, you should wait for delivery ideally after discussing with the oncologist and the patient herself then chemotherapy and radiotherapy should be avoided try to avoid those uh, treatment and if the cancer is in the advanced stage you can stop literally the treatment after consulting with the patients so this was all about csr vaccine pregnancy thank you friends